Hey, how you doing? Justin here and man, have I got a fun lesson for you today. We're going to be looking at writing a song and I'm going to use a dice to help me make decisions. Now, there's a fantastic cult classic book called The Dice Man. Definitely recommend checking it out if you're not familiar with the story. It's a bit dark, but very, very cool. So we're going to use a similar sort of an idea, but I'm going to use the songwriting skills that I think are really useful to know when you're a beginner writer in conjunction with the dice. So I'm going to use the, the this lesson to explain song form and how it works and some kind of basic principles. But the really key, super duper important thing to remember is that there are no rules when you're writing songs. So while I'm talking about using songs in a specific key or how many bar a section should be or, you know, modulating for the chorus or whatever, they, they, the rules are just kind of very rough standardized guidelines because most of the best songs break all of the rules or at least most of them or some of them. So this is just kind of a starting point. If you're new to writing songs, it'll give you an idea of something to compare other songs to when you do it and analyzing songs that you really like. It'll give you some idea of the structure. Um, and on top of that, we're get, as well as using the dice for that, I've just put a, a thing on my Instagram asking for people to put on lyrics, lyric ideas. So we're going to talk a little bit about the lyric idea as well and how we might try and tie that. And I'm going to try and use some of the lyrics uh, that we've got from my Instagram account, which is going to make it uh, very interesting again. Um, but let's just see how it goes. This might be an unmitigated disaster. I don't know, to be honest. I, it's a fairly new kind of an idea, this one. The first thing, we're going to be using the six chords in the key of C to start off with, which are C, D minor, E minor, F, G, and A minor. I've assigned each a number, C being one, D minor being two, E minor is three, F four, G is five, and A minor is six, the same as you would number them for the key. Now to start off with, I'm going to have an eight bar chord sequence. Okay, most chord progressions are either four, eight, 12 or 16 bars, groups of four. Usually, again, not all the time, but just as a, a, as a fun starting point, we're going to have a verse that is eight bars long, possibly 16 bars long, like twice as long. So I'm going to start on my page by just drawing up uh, a little eight bar sequence here. Uh, this beautiful uh, tab paper, if you're looking for it, is uh, the exclusive Justin Guitar branded uh, manuscript paper, which will definitely help you write a better song, not. Um, now we're going to start with a C chord as chord one, and that's I'm doing that to kind of make it a little bit simpler for the rest of it, because now it doesn't really matter what the order of the chords are, as long as we're coming back to that C chord as the first chord. Again, it's, it's, this is just for now as an exercise to make things super simple, but it, you wouldn't normally have to start on the one chord if you're writing a song. In fact, it might even be a bit twee to do that. So there's C, that's our first chord. Now let's just roll the dice. Chord five. So we've gone from C to a G, and now roll the dice again, and we got a two chord, so that's a D minor. I am gonna stop it if we get two of the same in a row. Three chord, so that's E minor. It's a good dice, giving us a nice range here. Back to the D minor, uh, the sixth chord to A minor. What would be awesome would be F, G, C here, but now we've got G, and what are we gonna have for last? Six, back to the A minor again, okay. Interesting chord progression. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So we'd have this. perfectly cool chord progression. That one, it might not exactly be the kind of progression that I would have picked. I'm not sure about that rhythm either. I'm just going to say uh, maybe a... I like that feel better. So as far as lyrics go, 
what my idea was, I'm going to just look at this little post. I've got 85 comments. I'm going to put them in uh, order of newest first and then shimmy my way along the bottom. I'm not going to use any of the ones that were just uh, like comments or silly kind of silly things. And then I'm going to try. <laughs> this is this might be really bad. I'm going to roll the dice and then count the comments up and then see uh, what we get to three. So one, two, three. But what if we don't have any coffee? Uh, but what if we don't have any coffee? That's our first line. And now I'll roll the, roll the dice again. One, it's the very next one. Oh no, I like the smell of new chairs. <laughs> Dude. Uh, I want to have four lines here. For this for verse one one again oh god because every watermelon heart is red god watermelon heart is red four uh one two three four i've been trying for a year to write some good stuff okay that doesn't count but i'm going to start from there five from there one two three four five through the fire and the flames we carry on fire and the flames we carry on okay so now i've got to see if I, i'm just going to be improvising this obviously but um but what if we don't have any coffee I like the smell of new chairs Cause every watermelon heart is red Through the fire and the flames we carry on <laughs> There we go, so we've got a verse. There's verse one. Now, first thing about songwriting is that normally the second verse will be exactly the same melody as the first verse. Now, this is going to be very difficult in this environment where I'm, I'm trying to use comments off uh, Instagram. But um, let's just see what happens if we uh, roll again. Number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it's Tammy's one. But fate had other plans for me. But fate had other plans for me at least it rhymes with coffee one love you like the ocean my only needed poison but i like the smell of new chairs uh, uh, see this is it now I'm, what i see what i'm trying to do now i should be explaining my process is i'm looking for similar scan so but what if we don't have any coffee it's 10 syllables but fate had other plans for me. It's eight. This one's got just too many syllables. The other one, I like the smell of new chairs. Seven, I like the smell of new. Love you like the ocean, my only needed po potion. 13, so it's a little bit um, crazy there. Uh, the ocean, my poison. The ocean, my only poison. Okay, that'll do. The ocean, my only poison. Uh, two, one, uh, one, two. Your sun-kissed cheeks make my knees go weak. Because uh, every watermelon heart is red. Your sun-kissed cheek make my knees go Uh Uh, yeah, I should stick with it. Uh, your sun kissed cheeks make my knees go weak. I'll try and add that in as well. Last one, three. One, two, three. Illuminating skies and illuminous. Illuminous. 
skies and sad goodbyes. Okay, now it's a big one. So the verse is going to need the same sort of melody, and I might have to adjust some of the, the uh, scan, the wording for that. Ideally, they want to be pretty much exactly the same melody, in which case I would start with one verse, and then I would try and sing through the other verses to follow exactly the melody. In this case, particularly with this kind of talky singing, and I'm not really following the chords exactly melodically, and I'm improvising it, it's a little difficult. But what is really key now is the chorus, and I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to have a couple of roles here, depending on what it is, because I want a, a really good um, single line really for the for the choruses. Five, one, two, three, four, five. It's been two years since I saw your face. It makes no sense. Everything changed so fast. It's just far too long. One, you can't hear the beginning of silence. Only its end. Okay, so I'm going to call it the end of silence pretty relevant right now actually and i'm going to do the chorus with just the one line now you could of course have a chorus that is longer than that i'm going to now pick the chords for the chorus the chorus we're just going to have a four bar sequence repeated around so uh, the four bar sequence repeated four times that's going to be the chorus and then we've got a verse check out how this goes um one oh we've got a c again Three, E minor, one, C. Oh, that's kind of working pretty well. This would be great to have a G now. I oh, know C again. I don't want to see a second C chord. Four, F. Okay. Let's see where we've got to for our song now. Okay. But what if we don't have any coffee? I like the smell of new chairs. Yes, that should have been Cause every watermelon heart is red Through the fire and flames we carry on Verse 2 But fate had other plans for me The ocean is my only poison Poison your sun-kissed cheeks make my weak knees go weak A luminous skies and sad goodbyes It's the end of silence It's the end of silence I need something better for the chorus there. It's the end of silence. I want a different silence. <laughs> I can't have it. It's the end of silence. It's the end of silence. I really don't like that C there. It's the end of silence. Just changing it to an A minor makes it loads better. So, sorry, dice man, I'm, I'm fiddling with the dice. And and this is like the experimenting bit, right? So there's no rules here about like you have to be doing this or you have to be doing that. I'm literally just experimenting and exploring this as an idea and, and trying to be a bit silly at the same time. But structurally, there are some important bits going on now. So re the usual run of things would be that you have a regular kind of verse. The second verse builds a little bit on, as far as like the, the whole thing, the strumming and the, the sound of it. Usually you might introduce a harmony on the vocal or something like that. The chorus needs to go a lot bigger all of a sudden and usually a bit different. That's why I've gone for just like one phrase that's getting repeated. More commonly in a chorus, you might have like a phrase, repeat the phrase, something different, and then repeat the phrase again, a common A, A, B, A form. Um, but you wouldn't have to, and again, explore artists that you like and see what you can come up with. But the important bit is this verse, verse, chorus, then it will nearly always go back to another verse, and then it will go back to uh, a chorus again, 
then there's a bridge and then a double chorus. So this structure is very, very common, this in, particularly in pop music, but in lots of other styles as well, because it really works. It's like you have this verse one should set up the story and set the tone of the kind of the, the song. The second verse develops the story a little bit more, obviously in this case where it's just kind of random lyrics, that's not really appropriate, but hopefully the listener will be relating to that story and feeling that I've experienced this story or I've dreamt it up or whatever. And the chorus is the one where we really relate the theme of the song back to our own experiences. At least that's how I kind of take it. So the, the verses are expressing my own feeling and then the chorus is expressing a generalized feeling that other people can relate their own stories to. Normally the first chorus is fairly big. Out of, out of 10, it would be about an eight. And then for the verse three, Again, you're sticking with the same melody, same style, same chords, nearly always, not always, but nearly always. And it would drop down dramatically and then come back up for another chorus, which would be an eight volume wise again. So it's really going to drop down again for verse three, back up for the chorus again. Uh, chorus would be again, generally the, exactly the same. And then the bridge. Now the bridge I'm going to do, uh, it's going to be an eight bar bridge. Uh, so four bars times two and I'm going to make all of the chords minors so whatever I come up with minor chords just to make it really different because the bridge needs to be minor oh beautiful it's starting with F minor I love and it's gone from F in the chorus oh couldn't have asked that to be any better five so F minor to G minor that's going to sound a little bit weird but we'll get there four again F minor to A minor we'll go to A major Oh God, going back to the F minor, that's going to sound well crunchy. So that's going to be my bridge chords. I need to get one more verse, don't I? I need, an, and then the bridge I'm going to worry about when I, when I get there. So let's uh, pop my uh, Instagram back on. So I need one more. So I'm going to have to write very small verse three. Uh, where do we have the luminous skies was the, the last... Uh, no, the silence thing. That, that was where we were up. So four, one, two, three, four. Why do I always give away my best lines? <laughs> always give away my best lines. That's a great first line. Uh, and then a four again. One, two, three, four. Towels and sandals. Towels and sandals, towns and sandals and shackles. I'm going to borrow that off the next thing just so that there's enough syllables. Three, one, two, three. Slap a naked chicken. Oh, no, I don't want that. That might have some weird connotation. The next one. I'm tired of playing this game called love. Um, tired of playing this game called love and last one five one two three four five i love my midnight toast uh, that's a bit silly the sun whispers like a gentle scream okay that relates to everything else uh, the sun whispers uh, gentle Scream. Okay, so in theory now I've got a whole song except for a bridge, uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, so let's see. Let's let's try and play mm. that whole thing through and see. I'll try and develop the form a little bit as well. So I'm going to keep verse one really quiet, then bring it up a little bit for verse two, a lot bigger for the chorus. Uh, in fact, for the chorus I might go into... Um uh Uh, that sounds bad. I'm just looking for something interesting to keep it. Yeah. 
Okay, so for the chorus, I'm going to make that an E minor with a B bass. And I'm going to use this little uh, structure, 3505. Oh, and then it, it's basically th this part of the chord here functions for the C and the E minor and as an A minor and an F kind of major 7 add 9 or something. It's just it's just a little trick to try and make it sound a little different there for the choruses. So uh, here we go. Uh, but what if we don't have any coffee? Uh, what if we don't have any coffee? I like the smell of new chairs. No, I didn't really like that. Um, but what if we don't like? Mm, but what if we don't have any coffee? I like the smell of new chairs. Cause every watermelon heart is red. Fire and flames we carry on But fate had other plans for me The ocean is my only poison Your sun-kissed cheeks make my knees go weak Illuminous skies and Sad goodbyes The end of silence The end of silence The end of silence The end of cleansing anyway. So the bridge totally sucks and I didn't have anything for it because the chords were too far out. I thought I'd go for something different because generally 
the way it works is the chorus is the thing that you want people to remember in a song. So you have this, the first verse and the second verse are introducing the story and, and getting the, the listener involved with your story. Then the chorus is the bit where they relate to their story to the chorus. And that's the hook. That's the bit that you want them singing when they haven't heard the song anymore. You have that big drop again, often a good way of getting people's attention is something if you go quiet people go oh what's he talking about you know especially for kids great one for if the kids aren't paying attention start talking quietly and they'll suddenly try and figure out what's going on so it gets their attention again you give them a little bit more of the story and then you got another chorus again and they're now they've heard the chorus twice and if the chorus is nice and simple they're kind of they're hip with the chorus now so uh ideally we want to give them as many choruses as we can but if we keep going with the chorus now it'll get a, a little bit too repetitive so the idea of the bridge is to have this really drastic change in, in everything. Normally you use different types of chords, a different rhythm, different orchestration, different range. Sometimes there's a key change. Whatever it is, to, it's kind of like a palate cleanser. If you go to like super posh restaurants, sometimes they'll give you a little thing to uh, cleanse your palate between courses so that what you ate in the first course doesn't affect your, uh, you know, the taste of the second course. So a little bit, it's like that. And then you can hit them with a double chorus. Then after their, their palate's been cleansed and they've forgotten about the chorus, you can hit them with a double one, a double chorus. It's also something, I don't know if you've noticed advertising people do it. They'll give you like a little snippet of an ad and then there'll be a different ad and then it'll come back for that first ad, but like a longer version. It's, it's definitely a way to get people involved with a hook is to give them a little bit of something, then have something completely different and then, you know, a bigger dose of that thing. So. This kind of song structure is what, you know, when you think of it in terms of, of, of dynamics as well, where you've got verse one here, you know, quite quiet, let's say a three, then the second verse, which is about a five, and then you've got an eight for the first chorus, and it drops down again for a three for verse three, then it's back up to an eight for the, uh, for the chorus, then the bridge can either go up to a 10 or down to a one, like some extreme away from the chorus. And then you back up to the, for 10 for those last two choruses. You've got these beautiful changes of dynamic as well, which really help keep people engaged. It's often, uh, in my experience with songwriters, it's one of the things that people don't pay attention to is the use of dynamics, um, because it's a, it is a really engaging part of, of music. Um, you know, listen to Nirvana or so, you know, any of the great writers. Now that now that we've I've gone through and I've talked a bit about this structure, the verse, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, chorus. And I've talked a bit about the dynamics and how they how they build and the repetition between the verses, that the verses should have the same melody, which this didn't because of my weird idea of using Instagram comments. But the um if you if you can compare that uh that basic song form structure to songs that you love, you'll learn a lot about writing and what sort of writer you might like to be. Uh, everyone is a little different. And if you really like country, then your songs forms are going to be a little bit more straight, you know, much more common chord sequences that get used a lot more often. You know, if you want to be a strict pop writer, you definitely need to get hit with the, the one, five, six, four chord progression for a chorus, for example. Uh, there are things like a pre-chorus. So often in pop, you have a thing called a pop stop, where it, in, in the verse, you have this little kind of tag on the end of the second verse where the music goes dead quiet before it starts with the chorus really big. There are these little techniques and they're not, I don't think that they're wrong to think of them as too formulaic, although formula in songwriting isn't, in my opinion, the best thing. But there are times where that sort of writing is what's required. Uh, and you need to find, you know, for me, the, 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 the biggest lesson that I, I took, I can't remember where I read it, it was in a, a book on songwriting, was I wrote down the 10 songs that affected me the most. What songs were the most important songs for me personally? Uh, and then I analysed the hell out of them. I really just looked at everything. I looked at, I really analysed the words. I did deep diving. What do the words mean? How did, you know, I looked at things like similes and metaphors and alliteration and how they were using the language, where it was specific, where it was general. Uh, I, I did a lot of study into the dynamic, you know, thing. This, you know, where, where it gets loud, where it gets quiet, the instrumentation, the, you know, the harmonies always coming in in the second verse kind of stuff. You know, they're, there are little tricks where, you know, I'm just seeing Green Day as well were one of those bands where I started, the, the formulas in their writing are really cleverly done, you know, and, and, and it makes for, I wouldn't be scared of the, 
studying the formula and stuff because nearly all of the great writers that I've ever met or or read you know biographies with or whatever have done that sort of study you know like maybe it's not like too it shouldn't be too mathsy but just really trying to I talk about the essence of a song so I'm trying to find the essence of those songs and how it works and how, and why why is it that I like that essence of that song and how can I use that kind of those cultivation techniques um for me I'm kind of drifting off topic a little bit here but for me songwriting is about finding seeds and a seed could be a guitar riff or it could be a lyric line or it could be a chord progression it could be anything I just need some sort of seed that's inspiring me to grow a song from it uh, and then by learning tools of the craft of writing will help you grow your seed better and as you get more experienced and you practice it more you'll learn more about different seeds and the way you have to treat them to grow them into a successful song or a song that you like um, and I definitely think that, you know, if you're a beginner guitar player, a really, really great thing is to just get into writing songs and, and they're likely to be rubbish. Like I've only probably written a, a dozen songs that I actually really like that, you know, in my life. And I must have written 150 or 200, maybe more songs. Uh, and a lot of them, especially the, the ones I started writing, are absolutely embarrassingly atrocious, you know, and like really awful, terrible lyrics, really cheesy and twee and just like awful, like boring chord progressions, bad arrangements, too lo far too long, you know. But that's the idea is that you've got to write those songs so that you you get better, you know, you build up your songwriting muscle and, and, and get better at it. And I think the sooner you start and the sooner you lose the fear of it, and you can see just through this, you know, I, I, I did a, a super exaggerated version of randomness because of course when you're doing it for real you're trying to find something new you're looking for creative things and I did one change there where I changed that I think it was a C to an A minor or something because I just was like this one isn't working so it's okay to do that in fact it's good to do that you know and and you shouldn't be afraid of any attempt at writing and just do it have fun and enjoy the process uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, attempt at writing a song and thank you for to everyone who participated on the uh, uh, on the Instagram post offering me some lyrics and uh, yeah go and write your own song if you write your own song drop me a link in the description on the website and uh, I'll try and go and check it out you know a link to YouTube or something don't email me the mp3 so because my email box gets too full as it is um, yeah I really hope you enjoyed this if you're over on YouTube uh, please hit that subscribe button and the like button I really appreciate the support thank you very much uh, there'll be a link to the website where you'll find the whole of my beginners course and other links on songwriting and other stuff as well you take care of yourselves and each other bye bye